Hi friends! So today for reading we are going to read What Do Roots, Stems, Leaves, and Flowers Do? by Ruth Owen. And we have a table of contents because this is a non-fiction book. Different but the same. No one can say for sure, but scientists estimate that there are nearly half a million different species of plants on Earth. Some plants, such as colorful pansies, may grow just a few inches high. Giant redwood trees, however, can grow higher than a 25-story building. Whether tiny or giant, most plants have the same parts, roots, stems, and leaves. Many types of plants also have flowers. Together, these plant parts work together to help a plant grow. They stay healthy and even produce future plants. So you have roots, leaves, stems, flowers. So this is a strawberry plant and this is a pansy plant. Roots for food and water. The roots of most plants are hidden underground in soil. Some plants have many roots that spread out in the soil horizontally. Trees usually have this type of root. A large tree may have woody roots as thick as a person's arm. Thinner hair-like roots grow from the thick roots. Other plants have one main root that grows down into the ground. This long, thick root is called a taproot. Dandelions and carrot plants have taproots. The orange carrots we eat are actually the thick taproots of carrot plants. So the top part of a carrot, the green part, is a carrot plant. And the orange part is the taproot. In order to be healthy, plants need water and nutrients, such as nitrogen, potassium, and calcium. A plant's roots act like drinking straws, taking in water and nutrients, which are dissolved in water from the soil. And I noticed in my book that the word nutrients is bold, which means it's an important definition, important word that has a definition in the back. So if you look at our picture over here in the bottom, we have our roots and the trunk of a tree. Roots for stability. Roots do more than supply a plant with water and nutrients. They also hold a plant in the soil and give it stability. Without roots, most plants would topple over when the wind blows or as their branches, leaves, or flowers grow and become heavy. The roots of a large tree may spread underground in an area two or three times the diameter of the tree's branches. Many trees survive for years on steep slopes because their roots hold the trees steady in the soil. So trees, branches, and leaves, the spread of the roots underground, so they go out all different ways. This tree lives on a steep slope and has been blown sideways by the wind. Its roots still hold it in place. So it's on a hill, but it's still up because the roots are holding it to the hill. A dandelion is also a good example of how roots can anchor a plate, plant in soil. Try tugging one of these little plants out of the ground and you will likely end up with only a handful of leaves and stems. The dandelion's taproot will stay firmly underground. So you have your dandelion plant up top, your taproot down here is a really long thick root and you have the little roots off of it. A plant's stems. A plant's stems support the plant acting like a framework. Thinner stems grow from a plant's main stem and connect to its leaves or flowers. On a tree, stems that grow from the plant's main stem or trunk are known as branches. The branches connect to even thinner stems or twigs where the leaves grow. 
A plant's stems contain a system of tubes called xylem and phloem. Flo the xylem tubes carry water and nutrients from the roots through the plant stems to its leaves. A plant's leaves act like little food factories making food for the plant. The phloem tubes carry this food from the leaves to wherever it's needed inside the plant. So this image was taken by a scanning electron microscope. It shows a slice from a nasturtium stem that has been magnified a hundred times. So it's the stem of this plant, but they zoomed in really, really close so you can see what it looks like. And over here it says a twig and leaves from a tree a tree stem or trunk, a framework of branches. So you have your tree picture, which is also a plant. Record breaking stems. In the world of plants, stems are often the plant part responsible for breaking records. A giant redwood tree in Redwood National Park in California is currently the tallest tree on earth. The record-breaking tree, named Hyperion, has grown to 379 feet tall. That's over 70 feet taller than the Statue of Liberty. It's possible, however, that one day an even taller tree might be discovered. The 2,000-year-old tool tree in Santa Maria del Tool, Mexico, has one of the thickest trunks on earth. At its widest point, the tree's trunk measures 114 feet across. That's wider than the length of a basketball court. It's this tree right down here. So this part down here is wider than a basketball court. Bamboo is a type of thick stemmed grass plant from Asia. The stems of one species of giant bamboo can grow up to three feet in a single day. Giant bamboo is a fast growing, huge species of grass. Leafy food factories. From long and thin to small and rounded, spiky, shiny, huge, and tiny leaves come in many shapes and sizes. The leaves of some plants are smaller than a dime. Others are enormous, like the gunera or giant rhubarb plant's leaves, which can grow to over 10 feet across. All leaves have a very important job to do. They make food for the plant. A plant may take in nutrients from the soil, but that's like you taking vitamins. To grow and remain healthy, you also need proper meals to give you energy. A plant is the same. It needs a type of sugary food for energy. It makes this food using water, carbon dioxide, from the air, and sunlight. And this is the giant rhubarb plant. We had another bold word over here, carbon dioxide, which I'm pretty sure I can find the definition in our glossary in the back, right up there. Leaves for photosynthesis. When a plant makes food in its leaves using sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide, the process is called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis takes place with the help of a substance called chlorophyll. It's the chlorophyll in plants that gives them their green color. The chlorophyll in a plant's leaves traps the energy in sunlight. Water is delivered to the leaves from the root. The leaves take in carbon dioxide from the air through microscopic holes called stomata. Once the ingredients are in place, a plant's leaves use sunlight to turn the water and carbon dioxide into a sugary plant food. So these are all the ingredients that is needed for photosynthesis. Oxygen, sunlight, carbon dioxide, the roots, water, and the minerals. During photosynthesis, something else important happens.
Plants make oxygen and release it from the stomata in their leaves. Without plants, humans and other animals would have to would have no oxygen to breathe. Fall leaves. Trees need their leaves for making food. So why do many trees drop their leaves in fall? During winter, the days are short. With few hours of sunlight, there is often less rain in winter too, and water in the soil may freeze. With little sunlight and water available, a tree's leaves cannot make enough food to feed the tree. Growing and keeping leaves healthy uses a lot of energy too. So in readiness for the tough winter months, many trees drop their leaves in the fall. The tree then stops growing and rests until spring to save energy. In the fall, many tree leaves turn brown, red, or yellow. This is because when the leaves stop making food, they also stop making green chlorophyll. This allows the leaves other colors, which are normally hidden by green, to show through. That's an interesting fact. Evergreen leaves. The leaves of many types of coniferous or evergreen trees look like thin green needles. Just like on other plants, however, each needle is able to use sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to make food for the tree. Coniferous trees often live through tough habitats. We know that word. Where sunlight and water are in short supply all year round. So these trees don't drop all their leaves in fall. Instead, they lose and regrow small quantities of leaves all year long. Having leaves all year allows coniferous trees to make food whenever they get the chance. Also, growing a whole new set of leaves each spring uses up a lot of energy. So coniferous trees keep their leaves and save their energy. So they have needles, each thin pine needle, shown here, is a leaf. Coniferous trees growing in a tough, cold habitat. It's another fun fact that each needle is a leaf. Flowers for reproduction. Many plants, including trees, grow flowers. These plant parts enable flowering plants to reproduce by making seeds. Flowers produce a dust called pollen on their anthers. The pollen from one flower, a lily for example, must be carried to the stigma of another lily. The lily with pollen on its stigma is now pollinated and ready to begin making seeds. Some flowers are pollinated by the wind blowing their pollen from flower to flower. Other flowers need help from animals such as insects, birds, and bats. When an animal such as a butterfly lands on a flower, some pollen sticks to its body. Then the butterfly flies off and visits a different flower of the same kind. Some of the pollen on the butterfly's body brushes off and sticks to that flower's stigma. Making seeds. After a plant's flowers have been pollinated, seeds begin to form inside the flowers. Seeds grow inside plant parts that protect them as they grow. A poppy plants seeds, for example, form inside a hard hollow case called a seed pod. The seeds of an apple tree grow inside protective fruits that we know as apples. In time, the plant's flowers die leaving only the fruit or seed pod behind. Once the seeds are fully grown, a seed pod will split open. The seeds fall to the ground where they can grow into new plants. Apples and other fruits fall to the ground too. Then the fruits rot away, allowing the seeds inside to settle on the soil ready for growing. And here we have a poppy flower with a seed forming in the middle. Fully formed poppy seed pods 
And then this is what it looks like inside. It's a split seed pod. And on this side, we have an apple blossom flower. The apple forming inside. And then we get our actual apple. A new plant. Once a seed is settled in some soil, it usually waits for spring before starting to grow. First, roots grow from the seed into the soil. Next, a seedling or shoot grows from the seed. Then, tiny leaves sprout from the seedling. The seedling's roots and stems deliver water to the leaves. The young leaves take in carbon dioxide and use sunlight to begin. Making food for the plant, the new plant grows bigger and stronger. In time, if it's a flowering plant, it will grow flowers for making seeds. A runner bean plant may take just weeks to grow. A tree may take hundreds of years. However, long its life, the different parts of a plant keep working together to help the plants grow, stay healthy, and reproduce. And in the back of our book, it has some experiments we can do to see what happens with plants and investigating the world of plants. And then we have our glossary. Do you remember what a glossary is? It tells us what words mean. Now this book had a lot of big words, so we can definitely use our glossary to read the definitions. And then at the end of our nonfiction books, we have our index. What does an index do? It tells us where certain sub items are. So if I want to know about carbon dioxide, I would find the word, and then I can go to the pages that that word is found on. Good job. Thanks for reading with me.